we have a few true or false and some multiple choice questions. And as usual, like we do every Saturday, immediately after the English quiz, um, literally within minutes, we start off with the Hindi quiz. So you get a chance to actually win two books every Saturday. And it's very interesting because as we were doing the analysis of all our winners this year, uh, because we are coming up with some interesting propositions. Um, you know, we're looking at all, all our winners, where they come from, who wins week on week. And it's very interesting to see certain patterns and very interesting to see that some of you actually go on to win like two or three books literally in a row. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a great, great way to actually collect books, I would say. So very smart indeed. And um, talking about the book we have this week, but before that, very quickly, an introduction to um, the game of facts and why we do what we do. Uh, India Fact Quiz is really the larger umbrella um, brand that we have of quizzes. Uh, we conduct an annual quiz for people between the age of 17 to 25. That's really our uh, sort of our key creamy customer as we speak. Uh, but really, we're looking at anybody who's interested in quizzing. We're looking at anybody who's interested um, in things around them and who's curious, wants to know about the progress that our country is making. Uh, so it's really not limited to a quiz. It's got nothing to do, like we say time and again, with general knowledge as much as it has to do with testing your own biases and perceptions. So that's what we are about. And we've been quizzing since uh, 2019. Uh, but we introduced the game of facts in August, actually, actually on August 15th, 2020, uh, with the idea that every week we'll have live quizzes and uh, try to get more people on the fact bandwagon. Because when you have an argument with somebody or you talk to somebody and you use data, you use facts and you use evidence, then your conversation, the level of the conversation goes to another um, sort of a, a heightened degree of information as opposed to opinion. So you can walk away making a statement, um, you know, without it getting too shrill and rhetorical because you actually have numbers on your side. So that was the whole idea of trying to get people to be a little more smarter and improve the discourse on any issue in this country, especially issues that matter. So we've been just doing live quizzes, literally one live quiz every three days. And it's extremely exciting where we are getting to. Uh, we can see that a lot of our quizzes are literally coming with us as we go along the way, which is extremely exciting. And Game of Facts is meant for everybody. So we don't care whether you are between any age group to any age group. It's just a time to sort of get together and um, quiz yourself. Think about your own biases and perceptions when you look at things. And yeah, the end of this quiz, walk away with a nice book. And the book we have for you today is one of my very, very favorite authors. Um, he's a political science, uh, international politics expert. Francis Fukuyama, the lesser said the better. He's just such a heavy weight on all things when it comes to uh, democracy and how it functions and what are the important aspects of, um, you know, a, a well-managed democracy and how the role of women holding property and, you um, having a good judicial and a police system, which is basically classified as rule of law and having institutions are extremely critical to a democracy. So probably one would not even think of these aspects and how they actually connect, but he does it in such a beautiful manner. And this book that you're going to get, it's called Liberalism and its Discontents, is a very, very classic essay on the definition of liberalism. So whichever side you are on the political spectrum and the best part about India Fact Quiz and the Game of Facts is 
there is no ideology here. There is no political leaning. Nobody's trying to push anything or any agenda simply because the numbers will take us where we want to go. So that's really how we look at it. And with that, um, I hope three uh, lucky winners will not only get this book, but share what your thoughts are on liberalism and its discontents uh, with us because I haven't read it. And I really want to know uh, what you think of it before I read it. So with that, welcome everyone. We've been quizzing and quizzing and quizzing and we absolutely, absolutely love it. I'm going to now share my screen. So you're gonna see your name on it. And as usual, we have the game pin, which is in the chat box. So any of you have any issues whatsoever in the course of this, um, this uh, half hour or 45 minutes with us, just put it in the chat box and we'll help you. Do not put your answers in the chat box because what's going to happen is you will not be rated. All you need to do, do is log in to www.kahoot.it. Don't download any app. Karthikeya, um, Prem, Niharika, they know the rules really, really well. Uh, but those of you who are new, please just uh, remember to just log in to www.kahoot.it, put the game pin in and you put your name in and whatever it asks you and you get into the quiz. Uh, the question and the options of the answers will uh, appear on the screen and you just go for the one that you think is right. Please play against your bias is the only uh, tip I will give you. And I'm sure it's worked for Udit and um, a whole bunch of you who have joined several times before and walked away with many, many books. So uh, the Chabra family uh, have really stocked the library very well. Um, and Amrita too. Hi, Dipankar. Nice to see you. Um, so with that, we get into the quiz. As usual, we have a couple poll questions and then we're going to get into uh, the actual quiz. The Punker is very critical for this set of poll questions because I know he's in Bangalore and Bangalore has been in the headlines for all the wrong reasons and fortunate reasons this, um, you know, this uh, past couple of weeks. And actually what has happened in Bangalore also made me think of my own behaviors and my own biases a lot. Uh, I'll tell you as we get into it, but with this, I hope everybody's comfortable. Uh, welcome everyone. And I'm going to get into the poll questions and we'll have a bit of a, um, a discussion. I hope, I think we can. Uh, and especially the Pankar, I would love to sort of know your views since you've been very close to what's happening uh, in Bangalore. So we're going to now start with the poll questions. And the poll questions essentially help give you a little bit of time as well, yeah, to get into the thick of things. So one of the things that we really wanted to ask was, and we're curious to know, is what have been your thoughts or sentiments on what you've been seeing in the media on the Bangalore uh, floods? Is it, uh, you know, an issue of bad urban planning and bad governance? Or is it something that you feel, oh my gosh, it really affects India's reputation and, you know, supposed to be the Silicon Valley? Or do you feel like it's just a few fancy bungalows, a few Lexus, Mercs, etc., which got damaged, so big deal? Or do you feel like it's a combination of everything, climate change, bad infrastructure, poor governance, all of that. So I think clearly we're all going for this whole combination, which it is, right? It's now I think all of us can clearly see the effects of climate change, bad infrastructure. And when citizens are not involved or engaged or interested for that matter in civic matters, this is exactly what happens. So it's kind of fascinating to just, you know, see how all of this has kind of come into play um, at this time. Uh, now, because uh, 11 of us said a few fancy bungalows, Mercs and BMWs were damaged. So what's the big deal? Like big deal, okay, this happened. Uh, but you know, a fact of the matter is, and this is something that even I sort of had to check myself because my point was that, you know, you have all these Lexuses which are floating and BMWs and all of that. 
and these fancy, um, you know, uh, bungalows which are impacted. And then even someone sent a picture on Twitter, I think, with a, you know, with one of the images of a living room where water has flooded the entire living room. And someone says, even in a flood scenario, Bangalore homes look so aesthetic, you know, and we were kind of making, uh, sort of making it a little frivolous, but um, I had to sort of check my own bias because sometimes when things, bad things happen to rich people or when rich people have all of these things, we feel like, yeah, big deal. I mean, it's it's hardly anything. It's it's no big deal. But on the other hand, one thinks about it and says, oh, there are a lot of these like big wigs, right? A lot of these CEOs and investors and all of that who have kind of lost their homes um, in what has happened. And you think, hey, when you invest in companies and you know when you spend all this money, you do so much due diligence. So when you're buying a house, which is so expensive and you're putting in all this expensive stuff, wouldn't you sort of think about these things and wouldn't you do a little bit of check on these structural things when you know this property is built on wetlands or built on in an area which is anyway so susceptible to flooding? So I think these are some thoughts really that, that one had. Um, but yeah, you have to kind of check yourself every now and then. Um, so another question we have, um, we just wanted to ask you a necessary life skill or something that you think we all should must learn. Uh, for you, what would that priority be? Would it be CPR? Would it be basic electrician course, especially with climate change and all of that, living off grid or swimming? What is that one skill that you think is absolutely necessary that you want to make sure you have? Okay, so I think it's CPR, yes, swimming. Um, and then a basic electrician course, because yes, one of the things that, you know, one kept hearing about on and off was how um, watchman went down in the basement of a building in Bangalore and he tried to turn on the pump because obviously you want the water to sort of, you know, um, you know, be diverted elsewhere. And then he got electrocuted or a young girl fell off her motorbike. And then, you know, she got like, so some of these things I think tell us that, you know, I don't think we ourselves know how to manage basic uh, things like this. And therefore we also need to make sure that especially the watchman or anyone in our building or, you know, in, in the surrounding area, if they have to do something like this, are they equipped to do it? I think these are things really that we need to understand and then of course yes living off the grid if you have to live off the grid and you need to drink water what's the best way to do filtration you know just things like that I think we're not really we're not ready yet we're too comfortable in and in that zone that we really have to sort of think a little uh, bit about what happens if we are in different kind of situations so yes that was my uh, rant for this week and thank you all just listening in and would love to see any comments that you have. Uh, the punker, you say fancy bungalows and BMWs make news. So many people struggle to go to work and they're not rich. And so many small businesses lost lakhs of rupees. And I so agree with you. And we do a very poor job and we do a very bad job in general of really getting stories like this out. Um, and sometimes, you know, one, again, it's such, it's, it's such pathetic thinking that, you know, it's like, okay, thank God in a way that it was this section of society that got affected. At least that news came out, you know, otherwise these are everyday indignities that middle-class and poor sections of society have to keep suffering. And, um, you know, somehow it's not reported enough. And that is why, um, you know, organizations and please, I'm doing a plug here, so excuse me, but organizations like India Spend um, are very important because what we try and do is we do not report on, uh, you know, which company got the latest, uh, you know, for Series E funding or, you know, um, million dollar uh, funding or unicorns or whatever. We talk about issues that really affect a larger section of society. And I think um, you know, we have to get used to and we have to read more and want to know more about this. And fact of the matter is Game of Facts is really, uh, you know, one way of doing it. So uh, I think we're all on that path. So 
the punker i so agree with um you know the the opinion that you've put across and it is really a tragedy that and you know when they get hit with the rich okay maybe it'll take one or two quarters for them to come back and they can go and fight it out with their insurance companies and you know get something out of it but it's really the small businesses and it's the poorer sections of society who struggle every time there's a flooding their fridges will break down their tv sets will break down their basic things that they require for for living uh you know really crumbles and they will build it up again for it to crash and they do this over and over till the time it really gets um too much and really unbearable for them so anyway on that on that very interesting note we will get into the game of facts again it's 10 questions we've put the puzzle questions in the middle somewhere uh and i'm going to guide you through those questions because uh game of facts is not easy i mean sometimes we just and i really admire you guys because you know we put these questions across and let me tell you some of the best reporters uh and some of the very wise people that i that i know of uh have actually not fared very well in these quizzes in fact i don't meena and i don't as well uh and every time we're stumped and we say my god i mean the folks who pay the play the game of facts week on week are way smarter than um you know most of us so here's to you and here we go with the first question it's double points for this question the states that are least prepared to meet the sustainable development goals we have a target of 2030 are chatisgarh and bihar jharkhand and bihar uttar pradesh and bihar or jammu kashmir and bihar so one state is the constant we're asking you which combination of states are really not going to meet the target 25 of you have said jharkhand and bihar and bihar in particular has been faring uh, really the least on um the sdg index rankings and um these two states um uh, are highly unlikely that they will by 2030 meet the target all right so we'll take a look at the scoreboard and again very dynamic uh so take a look at it but it's going to look very different by the end of this quiz so it's pushpa shaheen uh parisha bharat mayur uh shaheen we seeing you after quite some time but it's really nice to see you okay true or false all the south indian states are among the top 10 best performing states in the latest sdg index is the statement true or false okay so 34 of you said true and you are right um so kerala of course has been consistently the topper on the sdg index the ranking index tamil nadu is a close second uh and then you do have well um you know himachal pradesh is there uttarakhand is there uh these of course are smaller north indian states as goa karnataka is on the list and then you have sikkim maharashtra gujarat and telangana andhra pradesh is also up on the list so in effect all the south indian states um really are well i would say um on you know in the top rung uh, of course the only uh, you know outlier would be the union territory of uh, uh, puducherry but that is uh, that is a separate case um so yeah i i think these are sort of indications Kerala and Tamil Nadu are in really good form because now at least there is a close competitor so Kerala needs to pretty much watch out the good thing about the SDG ranking index and one may say and one may feel bad about oh india has slipped the rung and all of that but it really gives you a sense of what are those components that are important um for progress and therefore you know why just attracting investment or having tech parks and 
you know, production, et cetera, is not really uh, the only answer to every, uh, every to economic progress, but actually a whole bunch of things uh, matter. So here we have it. It's uh, pretty much the same issue as far as the scoreboard is concerned. So we'll get into the next question. Double points for this one. The best performing union territory on the SDG index is Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Lakshadweep, Chandigarh, or Puducherry. Okay, so 25 of you got it right. It is Chandigarh. Chandigarh is um, interesting because when you look at any of the parameters, you look at it's the wealthiest uh, place in India. When you talk about the number of libraries that the schools have, Chandigarh fares the highest. Uh, practically every government school has a full-fledged library. You know, things like this really um, make the difference here, especially on, on, on ranking like this. I mean, it's fascinating just how many different facets really um, are part of the whole uh, sustainable development goals um, index. So we look at the scoreboard again, and there's quite a bit of change. It's Mayur, Anuj, Ayush, um, Shetty, and Sneha. And we'll get into the next true or false. Globally, almost one in six businesses have received bribe requests by public officials. Is this statement true or false? Okay, so yes, again, um, this is one parameter that actually really cripples businesses. So like the Pankar mentioned, sometimes you have uh, the floods that really don't let small businesses get ahead. And then you add issues like, so you have infrastructural issues and then you have these man-made issues of, uh, you know, bribes, et cetera. Really, where does that leave small businesses that really just completely, um, you know, they, they actually collapse under the whole pressure. So that is another issue and part of the sustainable development goals, by the way. So it's Mayur, Sneha, Anuj, Akhil, and Ayush. And we'll get into the next question. Double points for this one. Percentage of world's food lost after harvesting and reaching and before reaching the retail market. So it's really the period between harvesting and before it reaches uh, the retail, the department store, or the Kirana shop, or wherever. Is it 13.3%, 23.3%, 43.3%, or 3%? 17 of you said 13.3%, which is a really odd number. I don't know whether you guessed it or you knew it, um, but this is a number that's uh, already we've lost 13.3% of the food before it's even reached the markets. And then that story is different. So we'll take a look at the scoreboard before we complete that piece of the story. It's Anuj, Ayush, Prem, Maisha, and Mayur. And we'll get into the next question. Double points for this one. Percentage of total food wasted at the consumer level. So we've lost 13.3% after harvesting and after it reaches the consumer's plate, is it 7%, 27%, 17% or 37%? There you go. It's 17% and 21 of you got it right. And it's now Anuj, Ayush, Maisha, Prem, and Shetty. And we get into the puzzle. This is where everything tumbles. Rank from high to low, the number of cases of these vector-borne diseases in 2021. These are all caused largely by mosquitoes. Your options are, and you need to rank them in the right order from high to low. So it's acute encephalitis syndrome, chikungunya, dengue or dengue, malaria. So the cases that are the highest 
you will put that right on top and then the rest will follow. The, remember, the one uh, disease that you hear pretty often enough is the most obvious one. You will probably take that on top. That's just a little hint I'm giving you. Okay, fantastic. Ten of you actually got it right. So dengue is has the highest number of cases. These are reported cases, by the way. So it may not be truly reflective. And sometimes, you know, we'll say, oh, these are reported, but actually, you know, it could be something else because, you know, it's so... The point of the matter is you we will go with government data and we will say, okay, fine, whatever has been reported, let's work with that. We all know, and I think most whether it's journalists or public health specialists or epidemiologists agree that there is massive underreporting. But the whole idea is if there's data out there, then we just need to keep adding more and making it better and better. And then, you know, we'll have a much better um, system to handle all of this. But it's dengue, which is in the lead with 1,93,000 cases. Uh, and then we have malaria. We have chikungunya, which is essentially just 11,890 cases. And then we have acute encephalitis syndrome, um, which is around 6,377. Some of this sounds very, very little, but yes, I agree with you. It does seem too little. There is massive underreporting, but these are numbers that the government has put forward, which is great, something to work with, right? All right. So because of that, now there's a bit of a tumble and now it's Maisha, Prem, Anuj, Neharika and Ayush. And we'll get into the next puzzle. Now we're asking you to rank from high to low the deaths caused by these vector-borne diseases. Uh, so we've talked about the number of cases. We're asking you the number of deaths. And here uh, the numbers or, or the order will change significantly because uh, you will realize that some of these diseases actually don't really result in as many deaths. Uh, so your options are malaria, acute encephalitis syndrome, chikungunya, and dengue. Again, the one you hear the most often um, is really the one that is the leading cause of deaths as well. But then, Subsequently, that could change. Okay, I think that I, I hope I didn't confuse you, but when we look at the number of deaths, the order changes completely. So, chikungunya, while you have a lot of cases. When we talk about deaths, zero deaths were recorded attributed to chikungunya. And then you have malaria, um, which is around 90 deaths, acute encephalitis syndrome, around 220 deaths. And then dengue had about 346 deaths. So there's a bit of a a change here, again, you'd look at these numbers and say, oh my gosh, there's so less, something is really wrong. These are government numbers and uh, hopefully uh, states will do a better job at not only recording the cause of death, but also reporting it into the system so that we have uh, better data to work with. All right, so nothing much has changed. So we'll get into the next question. SDG3 targets a global 33% reduction in suicides by 2030. So India typically accounts for what percentage of global suicides? Is it 3%, 30%, 13%, or 53%? And we're just one nation. So keeping that in mind, 10 of you said 
30%, and you are right, um, I think majority of you said 13%, uh, and that is way too low. Um, the sad part about this is, again, here we may say this a little bit of underreporting, misreporting, whatever it may be, but the burden of deaths by suicides that um, India carries is the heaviest by any one nation in the world. And that's really something we have to uh, think about. The perception is that, oh, it's the farmers and farmer suicides, you know, sort of get a lot of media attention, but actually uh, it's a silent killer and it's students and women who are facing the brunt of, um, you know, this whole aspect and driving them uh, to die by suicide. So this is one thing that we really need to keep in mind. And I think at our level, at an individual level, what we need to do is just understand the data, understand uh, you know, what the magnitude of the problem is. And therefore, we will know that, you know, sometimes if somebody is feeling a little unsure or extremely anxious, extremely depressed, you're not going to take it lightly because you know that, you know, there are these statistics, there is this data backing it, and you will make sure that the person gets the right counsel or the right treatment or the right, uh, some some sort of relief to their current anxiety or problem, all right? So we'll take a look at the scoreboard again, and there's a bit of a tumble. It's now Prem, Maisha, Anuj, Neharika, and Ayush. And this is uh, double points. Globally, more women than men go hungry. Is this statement true or false? Okay, so I think most of you got this one right. And again, here we talk about um, simple things like this, right? We're always talking about how women are invisible in the workforce, how public infrastructure doesn't take into account women, how even global hunger affects women uh, more than it affects men. So these are really some some issues that we all need to grapple with. And the sustainable development goal, which focuses on zero hunger, is really where this statistic falls and is extremely critical for all of us. All right, so I think we've come to the end of this quiz and we're at the podium now. In the third spot, we have Anuj. In the second spot, we have Prem. And in the first place, we have Maisha. So that's wonderful. Congratulations, Maisha, Prem, and Anuj, and Neharika and Ayush. You are the runner-ups. Very well played and very, very richly deserved. Uh, you're going to get Francis Fukuyama's liberal liberalism and its discontents. And don't go anywhere because I'm going to now stop sharing my screen. The Hindi pin is in the chat box. And Minal is right here somewhere. So um, please just put the game pin in and Minal is going to be on very, very soon. Uh, so I'm going to sh stop sharing right now and we'll wait for Minal to come on and then I'll just, yeah, there she is. I'm, I'm just taking some issue with my camera. So I'll just connect that. Okay. Hello, good evening, namaste. Welcome to Game of Facts. We just played Game of Facts English or Abhi, uh, I request you to not go anywhere because we Hindi mein ye quiz khelne wale hai with another set of 10 questions. Um, septem September hai, so it's all about SDGs. So we'll play the Hindi quiz very shortly. Uh, the game pin is shared with you in the chat box. So you can put the game pin in the Game may enter कर सकते हैं तब तक मैं आपको थोड़ा सा किताब के बारे में बताऊंगी जो आज आप जीत कर जाएंगे 
सबसे पहले एक छोटी सी अनाउंसमेंट है uh, अब से आप जब भी अपना प्राइस क्लेम करेंगे आई रिक्वेस्ट यू टू ऑल्सो गिव अस योर पैन कार्ड नंबर ये हमारे फाइनेंशियल ऑडिट्स के लिए भी रिक्वायर इट सो इट्स इट्स एडेड इन द गूगल फॉर्म क्लेम जो क्लेम के लिए गूगल क्लेम फॉर्म है उसमें एड किया गया है सो इफ यू डोंट हैव योर ओन पैन कार्ड आप किसी फैमिली मेंबर का पैन कार्ड भी एड कर सकते हैं दैट्स नॉट एन इश्यू बट इट्स जस्ट फॉर Uh, our financial audit purposes and we will not share that information with anyone and also we'll uh, destroy that information as soon as we're done with it so uh, just that is what i wanted to tell you all aur abhi hum quiz ke sath start karne wale hain so i'll just share my screen aur aap tab tak game pin enter kar sakte hain ओके वाई यू आर स्टिल पुटिंग इन द गेम पेन आई टेल यू अबाउट द बुक जो आज आप जीत कर जाएंगे थ्री ऑफ यू हु विन द बुक टूडे हु विन द क्वेज टूडे आर गोइंग टू रिसीव इस किताब का नाम है बाली उमर और ये लिखी है भगवंत अनमोल ने पिछले वीक पिछले हफ्ते भी हमने उनकी ही एक किताब थी जो आपको एज अ प्राइज दी थी और इस हफ्ते भी उनकी ये किताब है बाली उमर इसका नाम है तो जो भगवंत अनमोल जी है वो वो यूजुअली जो उनके उनके थीम्स होते हैं इट्स इट्स अबाउट सोशली सेंसिटिव टॉपिक्स और इस किताब का भी कुछ ऐसा ही थीम है एक सिमिलर थीम है एक सरल शब्दों में अगर मैं बताऊं इजी वर्ड्स में तो बच्चों के बचपन का बचपना यानी कि जो 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 उनकी मिस्टीवियसनेस होती है यानी कि जो शरारतीपन होता है बच्चों का या छोटी से छोटी चीज भी होती है तो वो बच्चे जो है वो ये वो इतने ईगर होते हैं इतने क्यूरियस होते हैं कि दे आस्क यू दोज क्वेश्चन तो यही इस इस कहानी का इस नॉवेल का थीम है और जो मेन कैरेक्टर्स हैं इस किताब के वो चिल्ड्रन है किड्स बट दिस बुक इज नॉट जस्ट फॉर किड्स इट्स फॉर एवरीबॉडी और ये जो किताब है इट्स सेट इन अ विलेज तो ऐसा नहीं है कि इट्स ओनली फॉर द पीपल हु आर हु लिव इन विलेजेस इट्स इट डू विद एनी रीजनल बैकग्राउंड एज सच तो ऐसे कुछ कुछ सेंसिटिव टॉपिक्स जो हैं इस किताब में वो बताए गए हैं एक तरफ ये किताब जो है टेक्स यू बैक टू योर चाइल्डहुड आपके जो बचपन के दिन थे उसके बारे में आपको बताते हैं और आपको याद दिलाती है और वही साथ ही साथ आ, कैसे आ, जो भी कंट्री में इश्यूज हैं सोसाइटी में इश्यूज हैं यूर ऑल्सो एबल टू थिंक ऑन यूर ऑल्सो एबल टू थिंक अबाउट दैट तो इट इट कवर्स द स्ट्रगल्स ऑफ एथनिसिटी डिफरेंट एथनिसिटीज एंड डिफरेंट रीजनल आइडेंटिटीज और कैसे लैंग्वेज और आइडेंटिटी जो है वो एक बैर uh, है हमारी uh, सभ्यता को आगे इंक्रीज करने में तो दिस इज दैट बुक दैट यू वॉन्ट रिसीव बाली उमर तीन जो आज के हमारे विनर्स होंगे यू रिसीव दिस बुक और अब मैं क्विज स्टार्ट करने वाली हूँ आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू नाइसी अंशिका प्रेम शुक्ला मुकेश चलते हमारी हिंदी क्विज के पहले क्वेश्चन की तरफ एंड आई होप दैट यू एंजॉय इट ऑल थिंग सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट गोल्स तो आज का जो हमारा पहला क्वेश्चन है वो आपके स्क्रीन पर अभी आने वाला है उनमें जो जो उनका प्रदर्शन है वो काफी कम रहा है और ये सही है थर्टी टू ऑफ यू गॉट दिस करेक्ट इजी फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन तो चलते हैं हमारे स्कोर बोर्ड की तरफ 
और इस क्वेश्चन के बाद वी हैव नीरज मयूर रोहित स्वाति एंड पद्मजा जस्ट जस्ट वर सो क्विक टू आंसर कि उन वो स्कोबर्ड पर हैं हमारे साथ चलते हैं हमारे आज के नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन की तरफ महामारी से पहले 2015-19 की अवधि में दुनिया एस पर प्रति वर्ष 0.5 अंक की दर से प्रगति कर रही थी यानी कि बिफोर द पैंडमिक ओवर द पीरियड 2015-19 द वर्ल्ड वाज प्रोग्रेसिंग एट ऑन बी एस टी जी एट अ रेट ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट फाइव पॉइंट पर ईयर क्या आपके हिसाब से ये सही है या गलत थर्टी वन ऑफ यू वॉट इट करेक्ट ये बिल्कुल सही है ऑल दो ये जो जीरो पॉइंट फाइव पॉइंट का भी जो प्रोग्रेस है दैट इज ऑल्सो वेरी लेस बट दिस वॉज बिफोर द पैंडमिक तो अभी तो ये और डिक्रीज हो गया है सो टू रीच आर टू द डेड लाइन दैट वी हैव टू थाउजेंड थर्टी की जो डेड लाइन है सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट गोल्स को रीच करने के लिए एज इट इज जो हम जिस स्पीड से हम चल रहे थे बिफोर द पैंडमिक वो भी बहुत कम ही थी बट नाउ दैट इज ऑल्सो डिक्रीज फ्रॉम जीरो पॉइंट फाइव पॉइंट so with this we move on to our next question but then we have our scoreboard one uh, we to hamare scoreboard pe abhi mayur swati rohit nayasi and kartikeya hain chalte hain hamare agle question ki taraf very dynamic so please stay till the end aur koi puzzle question nahi hai aaj aapke liye <laughs> so i think that would be exciting so next question double points milenge aapko is question ke समृद्ध यानी कि रिच दे, रिच देशों में जलवायु यानी कि क्लाइमेट और जैव विविधता यानी कि बायोडाइवर्सिटी लक्ष्यों पर प्रगति तेज है प्रोग्रेस ऑन क्लाइमेट एंड बायोडाइवर्सिटी गोल्स इज फास्टर इन रिचर कंट्रीज क्या आपके हिसाब से ये सही है या गलत हम रिच कंट्रीज की बात कर रहे हैं तो उनमें जो प्रोग्रेस है ऑन क्लाइमेट एंड बायोडाइवर्सिटी दैट इज फास्टर दैन द पोअर कंट्रीज ओके सो सो ट्वेंटी थ्री ऑफ यू वॉट दिस करेक्ट ये गलत है इनफैक्ट जो जो पुअर कंट्रीज हैं दे वर मेकिंग अ बेटर प्रोग्रेस ग्रेटर गेम्स दैन द रिचर कंट्रीज और जो उनका प्रोग्रेस था ऑन क्लाइमेट एंड बायोडाइवर्सिटी दैट वॉज ऑल्सो आई मीन फॉर रिच कंट्रीज इट वॉज टू स्लो इन कंपेरिजन टू द पुअर कंट्रीज सो विद दिस स्कोबोर्ड वंस अगेन मयूर हैज just taken his spot on the scoreboard and then we have rohit swati kartikeya nice chalte hain hamare agle question ki taraf duniya bhar mein 10 me se ek vyakti bhook se peedit hai one in 10 people worldwide is suffering from hunger aapke hisab se kya ye sahi hai ya galat humne pichle quiz mein rashmi ke quiz mein aapne dekha that more women uh, were suffering from hunger than men here we are talking about this number and uh, 27 of you got this correct uh, worldwide agar hum pure duniya ki baat kare to 10 me se ek jo vyakti hai wo uh, bhook se peedit hai yani ki they are they are suffering from hunger and with this our scoreboard here oh wow this is like a total shift अब हमारे स्कॉबोर्ड पे नाइसी आई थिंक वो फिफ्थ पोजीशन पे थे अब वो फर्स्ट पोजीशन पे हैं उनके बाद है संबुद्धा देन वी हैव हर्षित दीपांकर इज जस्ट कम ऑन आर स्कॉबोर्ड विद अ स्ट्रीक ऑफ फोर करेक्ट आंसर्स इन अ रो व्हिच इज ग्रेट देन वी हैव मयूर ऊक्स मयूर जस्ट स्लिप्ड फ्रॉम दैट फर्स्ट पोजीशन बट स्टिल यू आर देयर सो यू कुड मेक इट बैक टू द टॉप और उसके लिए हम आपको नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन पर लेके जाते हैं हियर वी हैव अ नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इसके भी डबल पॉइंट्स लॉट्स ऑफ चेंजेस ऑन द स्कोरबोर्ड 2020 में अपने मूल टीकाकरण से चूकने वाले बच्चों की संख्या नंबर ऑफ चिल्ड्रेन हु मिस देयर बेसिक वैक्सीनेशन इन द ईयर 2020 आपके ऑप्शंस है 22 मिलियन 2 मिलियन 12 मिलियन और 42 मिलियन जो बेसिक वैक्सीनेशन है फॉर चिल्ड्रेन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी ईयर में सिक्सटीन ऑफ यू गॉट दिस कर रहे ट्वेंटी टू मिलियन जो बच्चे हैं टू बी प्रिसाइज ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट सेवन मिलियन जो बच्चे हैं दे मिस्ड देयर वैक्सीनेशन बेसिक वैक्सीनेशन बिकॉज ऑफ द पैंडमिक क्योंकि ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी में कोविड uh, स्टार्ट हो गया था और uh, उसी साल उसी उसी की वजह से 
22.7 मिलियन बच्चे अपने मूल टीकाकरण यानी कि जो बेसिक वैक्सीनेशन होती हैं उनसे वो उन्हें नहीं मिल पाई थी एंड दिस इज 3.7 मिलियन मोर देन दिस वाज एक्चुअली दिस दिस नंबर इज 3.7 मिलियन मोर देन इट वाज इन 2019 तो ये uh, काफी ज्यादा बड़ा नंबर है पिछले साल के कंपैरिजन में और इस क्वेश्चन के बाद हमारा स्कोरबोर्ड वंस अगेन वी हैव संबुद्धा हर्षित मयूर इज इज गोइंग इज जस्ट क्लाइंबिंग द लैडर और उनके बाद है कार्तिकेय प्रिया तो विद दिस वी मूव ऑन टू आवर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन महामारी ने लगभग 1.15 लाख फ्रंटलाइन स्वास्थ्य देखभाल कर्मचारियों का जीवन ले लिया पैंडमिक क्लेम द लाइव ऑफ अबाउट 1.15 लाख फ्रंटलाइन हेल्थ केयर वर्कर्स क्या आपके हिसाब से ये सही है या गलत We're talking about frontline healthcare workers और pandemic की वजह से ऐसे कितने थे जिनकी मृत्यु हो गई थर्टी थ्री ऑफ यू गॉट दिस करेक्ट आई थिंक दीज आर दीज आर ट्रू ऑफ ऑल्स थोड़ा सा इट्स इधर दिस और दैट आई मीन थोड़ा वो स्टेक्स ज्यादा हाई होते हैं एंड थर्टी थ्री ऑफ यू गॉट दिस करेक्ट जो वन लैख फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड फ्रंट लाइन वर्कर्स हैं जिन्होंने अपनी जिन्होंने अपनी जिनकी मृत्यु हो गई बिकॉज ऑफ द पैंडमिक ड्यूरिंग द पैंडमिक एंड विथ दिस वी मूव ऑन टू आर स्कोरबोर्ड वंस अगेन सो हर्षित संबुद्धा कार्तिकेय मयूर एंड प्रिया सेम नेम्स पर जस्ट द शिफ्ट ऑन द स्कोरबोर्ड चलते हैं हमारे अगले क्वेश्चन अभी भी कुछ क्वेश्चंस बचे हैं सो यू डोंट हैव टू फील डिसार्ट यू कैन ऑब्वियसली मेक इट और जैसा कि मैंने कहा कि कोई पर्सनल क्वेश्चन नहीं है सो योर चांसेस आर इवन मोर कि एक एक क्वेश्चन गलत होगा ही होगा बिकॉज यू नो यू माइट थिंक कि पर्सनल तो होगा ही नहीं सो वाई अटेम्प्ट आल्सो सो यू स्टिल हैव दैट इसके डबल पॉइंट्स मिलेंगे आपको वर्तमान गति से राष्ट्रीय राजनीतिक नेतृत्व में महिलाओं और पुरुषों का समान रूप से प्रतिनिधित्व करने में कितने वर्ष लगेंगे At the current pace, number of years it will take for women and men to be represented equally in national political leadership. Uh, is it thirty years, twenty years, forty years, or ten years? Just pace we are now progress. We are not progress yet, but whatever progress we are doing, we will be able to make according to the pace we are going. How many years will it take for men and women to have equal national political leadership rights? Fifteen of you got this correct. You went with the highest number, which is unfortunately the right answer. So uh, at this current pace uh, of our progress on the sustainable development goals, uh, it will take about forty years. So forty years will be more lagenge for women and men to be represented equally in national political leadership in their countries. So our scoreboard once again. Okay, so Kartik has finally made it to the top. Then we have Mayur, Shukla has just come up on the scoreboard. So, उनके बाद है हर्षित और फिर दिपांकर. So, moving on to our next question. 2020 में वैश्विक रोजगार घाटे में महिलाओं की हिस्सेदारी कितने प्रतिशत है? Women accounted for X percent of global employment losses in 2020. आपके हिसाब से क्या ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट है फाइव परसेंट है फोर्टी फाइव परसेंट है या थर्टी फाइव परसेंट है इन द ईयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी विच इज द ईयर ऑफ द पैंडमिक वीमेन अकाउंटेड फॉर एक्स परसेंट ऑफ ग्लोबल एम्प्लॉयमेंट लॉसेस सिक्सटीन ऑफ यू आपने बिल्कुल सही उत्तर दिया है एंड जो करेक्ट आंसर है दैट इज फोर्टी फाइव परसेंट और यही हम टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन की बात करें तो अबाउट थर्टी नाइन परसेंट ऑफ टोटल जो एम्प्लॉयमेंट थी दैट वॉज फॉर वेमेन एज इन वेमेन अकाउंटेड फॉर थर्टी नाइन परसेंट ऑफ टोटल एम्प्लॉयमेंट इन ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन लेकिन जब बात आई फॉर फॉर जॉब्स वेन वेन पीपल वर जस्ट Kicked out of their jobs. Uh, about forty-five percent of global employment losses were faced by women, and uh, this was in twenty twenty. 
So with this, we go to our scoreboard once again. बहुत ही slight shift है, but Swati is just happy because uh, अब वो scoreboard पे आ चुके हैं. और इस question के साथ, I think we're I think we're left with about two more questions. So चल चलते हैं हमारे next question की तरफ. Double point. उन उन महिलाओं का प्रतिशत जो सेक्स और रिप्रोडक्टिव स्वास्थ्य देखभाल पर अपने स्वयं के सूचित निर्णय लेती हैं परसेंटेज ऑफ वेमेन हु मेक देयर ओन इनफॉर्म्ड डिसीजंस ऑन सेक्स एंड रिप्रोडक्टिव हेल्थ केयर इज इट 87% 37% 57% और 77% आपके हिसाब से ऐसी कितनी महिलाएं हैं जो रिप्रोडक्शन और सेक्स रिलेटेड जितने भी डिसीजन होते हैं दे मेक देर ओन इनफॉर्म्ड वेल चॉइस दे मेक देर ओन वेल इनफॉर्म डिसीजन एंड चॉइसेस ट्वेंटी ऑफ यू वेट विद द लोएस्ट नंबर विच कुड हैव बिन पॉसिबल बट आई एम ग्लैड इट्स नॉट इट्स एटलीस्ट फिफ्टी सेवन विच इज नॉट द बेस्ट बट इट इज मोर देन हाफ Not a lot, more than half. Fifty-seven percent of women, uh, who are they who are aged fifteen to forty-nine years, they make their own um, informed decisions on sex and reproductive health care. Or uh, two of you, I see, are very optimistic. You've chosen eighty-seven uh, percent. Uh, sorry, you've chosen seventy-seven. Five of you have chosen eighty-seven percent. Uh, I hope that would have been the case. In fact, more than that. But at 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 the current position we are it's about 57% so with this um finally somebody from the chabra family has made it to the scoreboard but we have kartikeya mayur shukla sambuddha and uh, mukesh to chalte hain hamare aaj ke last question ki taraf and then we'll have our winners in front of us char mein se ek mahila 15 varsh se upar ki aayu ki को अपने जीवन काल में कम से कम एक बार पार्टनर वायलेंस यानी कि जो इंटरमेट पार्टनर वायलेंस वायलेंस है उसका शिकार होना पड़ता है होना पड़ा है वन इन फोर वेमेन एज फिफ्टीन इयर्स अब हैज बीन सब्जेक्टेड टू इंटरमेट पार्टनर वायलेंस एट लीस्ट वंस इन देयर लाइफ टाइम क्या ये सही है या गलत सो एनी थिंग कैन चेंज आई मीन अब कोडिंग में लुक टोटली डिफरेंट क्योंकि लास्ट क्वेश्चन एंड ट्रू ऑफ ऑल्स एंड थर्टी थ्री ऑफ यू गॉट दिस करेक्ट मोस्ट ऑफ यू गॉट दिस करेक्ट आई थिंक इंग्लिश क्विज में भी ऐसा ही हुआ था लास्ट क्वेश्चन वॉज ट्रू ऑफ ऑल्स और मोस्ट ऑफ यू गॉट इट करेक्ट सो वील इट विल बी फंड टू सी द पोडियम नाउ तो चलते हैं हमारे आज के क्विज के विनर्स की तरफ पोडियम पर तीसरे स्थान पर हमारे क्विज में आज है शुक्ला जो पूरे टाइम स्कॉबर्ड पे उतना थे भी नहीं देन वी आर मयूर एंड ऑन द फर्स्ट पोजीशन हमारे क्विज के विनर है कार्तिक एयर सो कंग्रेचुलेशन टू ऑल ऑफ यू जो हमारे विनर्स रन अप है यू आर संबुदा एंड मुकेश आप अपना प्राइज क्लेम कर सकते हैं विद गूगल फॉर्म दैट इज शेयर विद यू इन द चैट बॉक्स एंड I I I wish you have a very happy weekend ahead. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you again next week with another double round of quizzing. Till then, take care and have a lovely weekend ahead.